So great to see everybody today. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we've been introducing ourselves in the chat, talking about where we're from and if we came to Checkology office hours with any specific purpose today. Um, my name is Jordan and I live in Chicago. I've been with NLP for about three years and I'm joined today by Kim and Shaylin who are here to answer questions in the chat. They both have a lot of great educational experience and can give concrete suggestions for how to use some of these resources in the classroom. Thank you for introducing yourselves, Gretchen and Jennifer. I'm gonna turn off my video so that my screen share goes really smoothly and I'll get started showing you some of NLP's resources. So the question that we aim to answer in this session is, what is the Checkology Virtual Classroom and how do I use it? Uh, but first we'll talk a little bit about the News Literacy Project. So News Literacy is the ability to determine the credibility of news and other content, uh, to identify different types of information and to use the standards of authoritative fact-based journalism to determine what to trust, share, and act on. So in other words, or in short, it's how to know what to trust. And at NLP, we make classroom-ready resources that help you teach concepts in news literacy. Uh, we've also recently expanded into providing a hub for exchanging best practices with other educators, attending events, and building community in your area. This hub is called Newslet Nation, and you can find it at newslet.org. When you head to newslet.org, you'll click on the For Educators tab, and you'll be brought straight to Newslet Nation. Here, you can create an account so that you can engage with other educators in the forum. As you can see, we have folks posting just about every day, asking for advice on how to integrate news literacy into their curriculum, asking about specific resources and more. Uh, on Newslet Nation, in addition, we have links to 13 different regional ambassadors uh, who are working in your regions to do outreach in your communities and to assist you on integrating news literacy in your classroom. So if you click on the Meet the Ambassadors button, you'll be able to find the person in your area and reach out to them. They're really excited to hear from you. And again, this is a new program. Um, so there's a lot of excitement surrounding it. When you scroll down the page, you'll come to the Educator Tools section. And this is where you can find all of the resources that NLP has made for you to use in the classroom. Today, we're gonna focus on Checkology, but I just wanted to briefly point out a few other uh, resources that are available for you. Again, these are all completely free. Uh, the first of which is the resource library. In the resource library, you'll find one-off um, classroom activities and, and infographics and other shareables. Um, you'll also uh, be directed to the SIFT, which is a weekly newsletter containing viral rumors and classroom-ready slides that you can screen share with students and dive into topics in journalism and news literacy. Can I jump in really quick and just yeah. take a, do a quick note that the resource library, when you click in there, you can see different grade bands. And I see that the people joining us today, our educators joining us today are from different backgrounds in middle school and high school. So that's also a really helpful way to sort of sift through some of those resources available to you on newslet.org and Newslet Nation. Great, thank you for those de details, Kim. So if you decide after looking at Checkology that in order to supplement the Checkology virtual classroom or as separate bell ringers, you'd like some shorter activities or, or things that stand to the side of Checkology, you should come here to the Educator Resource Library which again is located on newslet.org in the For Educators button. And finally today, you'll see the Checkology Virtual Classroom. Uh, Checkology is a collection of news literacy resources that are made by professional journalists and educators for your middle school and high school students. It's meant to be used synchronously and asynchronously, and it's meant to be integrated into your plans for subjects as diverse as ELA, social studies, science, civics, and government. It's completely free to use, this year, we have over 2,000 teachers actively using Checkology with over 75,000 active students, and we hope that you'll consider joining after seeing this today. So the main offering on Checkology are its 14 core news literacy lessons. Each of these 14 lessons is hosted by a subject matter expert, and they cover topics like misinformation, the standards of quality journalism, conspiratorial thinking, and more. And they contain real world examples from news organizations and social media to make the topics relevant for your students and to provide ample opportunities for pausing and engaging in conversation. These lessons can be assigned as homework or extra credit or you can do them together in class. Um, it really depends on what your current configuration is and what your preferences are. In order to dive into what a Checkology lesson looks like, I'd like to preview the lesson called Understanding Bias. We debuted this lesson last school year and in this lesson, the subject matter expert Indira Lakshmanan of National Geographic sets the context for analyzing news media bias by first talking about the difference between news and opinion. So let's check out Indira's video about news versus opinion. This is a foundational sub, uh, subject in news literacy and we touch on it in many uh, spots in the Checkology Virtual Classroom. 
So what exactly is bias? News media bias is when opinions favoring one side of an issue or event skew news reporting in a way that is unfair or distorting. First, let's make an important distinction between news that aims to be impartial and other content that obviously expresses a point of view. A lot of the information we encounter every day is not news, and it's not trying to be impartial. Movie and book reviews, games, ads, and even most of your friend's social media posts are created with a point of view, and they aren't meant to be unbiased. Not even all journalism aspires to be unbiased. Opinion columns, newspaper editorials, and political commentary on TV try to persuade you to agree with them. Opinion journalism is supposed to express a point of view, to provoke discussion. News journalism, however, isn't meant to persuade us. It's supposed to inform us. This kind of reporting needs to be produced fairly and accurately and should include a range of voices. It should not include the voice of the reporter. The primary purpose of this type of story, a straight or hard news story, is to provide an accurate representation of issues and events. That means presenting the relevant facts in as straightforward, clear, and impartial a manner as possible. That way, the audience can draw their own conclusions without being swayed by the individual journalist's point of view. When gathering information and reporting news stories, journalists follow standards designed to strip away the influence of their own conscious or unconscious biases. After all, who among us can be truly objective? We're humans with different backgrounds who bring different perspectives to the table, and we're all fallible, no matter how rigorous our process. But one thing we all can and must be as journalists is impartial, in the way we gather and present facts and information. Many people, adults as well as students, confuse commentators, columnists, and other opinion journalists with news reporters. They aren't the same. Most news organizations have both news and opinion journalists, but it's only the news reporters who are supposed to be unbiased. In fact, the opinion staff and news staff report to different bosses. At many news organizations, the news and editorial staff are physically separated and might even work on different floors. So again, the difference between news and opinion is a foundational news literacy skill and something that we focus on quite a bit in Czechology. Uh, the foundational lesson for just uh, differentiating between news and opinion is called infozones, and it introduces the two concepts among uh, six total infozones and gives students a lot of practice in differentiating between the two. But in understanding bias, we make sure to drive this point home again uh, with this one video about the difference between news and opinion, and then one assessment using real world examples. Here you can see when you click read example uh, that students are given real world examples from news organizations and they're asked to determine which one is straight news. When students select the uh, answer, they click next and they're given feedback. Uh, feedback is a really important learning tool on Checkology. Uh, every time a student encounters an assessment, they'll get correct or incorrect feedback that is customized to that particular assessment so that they can learn uh, from how they respond. So after this distinction is driven home, Indira introduces five types of news media bias in a lesson element that has five different short and engaging videos. So let's check that out. Here you'll see that we introduce five types of bias um, or uh, as opposed to five forms of bias or ways that, ways that bias is expressed. Um, and these are all short and engaging videos, again, containing real world examples that give students an introduction into each of the five types. Uh, so together we'll check out the corporate bias video. Another kind of bias is corporate bias, a type of bias in which the business or advertising interests of a news outlet or its parent company influence how or even whether a story is reported. Most news organizations maintain a strict separation between the business side and the journalism side of their operations to try to prevent this kind of influence. Journalists working on news stories, for example, typically do not interact with the sales staff who might be selling advertising to companies or political candidates. But that doesn't mean the reporters and editors aren't aware of what's going on at a corporate level. For example, reporters know their news organization's parent company and may even be aware of who its major advertisers are. This could unconsciously or even consciously affect their work. If the owner of a news organization is outspoken about a particular issue, it might be hard for reporters to set that aside. 
If the owner of a news organization runs for political office, for example, he or she would typically recuse himself or herself from any news decisions. But the situation would still present an awkward challenge for reporters or editors covering the race. As a news consumer, you can test any suspicions of corporate bias you might have by comparing coverage from a variety of high quality news outlets. If you notice obvious differences in the coverage, you should point it out in a comment or a social media post or a letter to the editor. So as you saw, Indira gives suggestions for how to analyze for corporate bias and encourages students to engage in newsletter behavior by even reaching out to journalists and news organizations. So students uh, or you as a class, if you're screen sharing or you're teaching in person, uh, watch all five of these videos. They're all less than two minutes long each. And then they are served with five hypothetical scenarios. Uh, and students are asked to determine what type of bias might be being expressed in each of these scenarios. So again, when a student selects an answer and they click next, they're given feedback as to whether the answer was correct or incorrect. And then they continue through the lesson. Um, I'm logged into a teacher account right now. Um, and in a teacher account, I have the flexibility of navigating the lesson elements going back and forth. But students and their student accounts will continue through a lesson chrono uh, chronologically. So I'd only be able to click next once I have selected the assessment answer. I saw a comment about the word editorial and the confusion that that can bring up. Uh, that's a great point. And we do notice that vocabulary is a big ask in Chalkology. So for that reason, we created the word wall. In each of the 14 core lessons, students and teachers both have access to the word wall, wall module on the bottom right hand side of each lesson. And here they can see the definitions for the key terms that are introduced in the lesson. The word wall also stands alone as a separate module on the top navigation of te uh, teacher and student accounts. So you can really make the word wall your own. So as students progress through the lesson, their progress saves. They can click exit at any time and return to the lesson on their own time. And once they get to the end of the lesson, they click the submit button and the entire lesson is submitted to your teacher account for your evaluation. Uh, so before we dive into account creation and setting up a class, I'd like to know what questions you have so far. Uh, we started by talking about what news literacy is and what NLP does. We went to News Lit Nation and took a look at the resources available here. And then we talked about uh, generally what Chuckology is, about the 14 lessons available, and we did a deep dive into the understanding bias lesson. So what else would you like to know uh, before we dive into creating an account and getting your class set up? Uh, Kim and Shaylin, do we have any questions that have popped up in the chat so far? Oh, we just got some, one moment. All right. Would it be possible just... to have different groups look at different types of bias in that lesson and then share in jigsaw style? Oh my gosh, I love this question because it's so great about integrating with the students, the student audience that you have. So Checkology is really great at um, presenting information about these, these topics and we encourage educators to integrate that into their curriculum, however it makes sense. Um, so you can always introduce uh, part of a lesson or a full lesson and then pause for a jigsaw style activity. And I'm going to be linking to our comprehensive lesson guides in a bit um, and that's going to have some great resources for you relating to each of these lessons that might help you create an activity like a jigsaw as a companion piece to one of these Checkology lessons. Jordan, do you have anything to add to a question like um, using Checkology with different activities like a jigsaw? Or um, I saw a question earlier about um, using a video with Edpuzzle. Absolutely. So as I said um, earlier, students in their accounts, they need to go through the lesson chronologically to make sure that they're not missing out on any content. But uh, with that limitation in mind, it is up to you to determine what sorts of breakout rooms you'd like students to be in, uh, especially in the lesson element I showed you with the five different types of videos. Um, you could create five different breakout rooms and ask students to navigate between one of these five. And they would have to drag their cursor to the end of the video. Uh, for each of the videos in order to continue to the next slide, uh, but that would be something that would be easy to instruct them to do. So I think the platform really lends itself well to that sort of uh, work, especially virtually, um, but of course in class as well. We also have a question about what kind of things can a newslet ambassador help a teacher with? 
Absolutely. So I think uh, one of the things that newsletter ambassadors are best equipped to help teachers with is doing outreach uh, within departments, uh, with colleagues, and even within a district. Newsletter ambassadors are really in touch with their community, uh, and they also know a lot about the field of news literacy in general. So if you'd like to have a newsletter ambassador speak to a group of you and your colleagues about uh, what Czechology is or about what news literacy is and talk about what how it can benefit your classroom, uh, they would be a great person to reach out to. They also uh, have all used Czechology in some way or another in their classrooms, as well as other NLP resources. So if you want to uh, ask questions about implementation, they'll be happy to help you with that as well. And if they don't know the answer, they know someone who does. And if you visit Newslet Nation, you'll be able to see some images of those ambassadors with a little blurb about each, each ambassador to give you some background information about each of them. So that's a great place to start and see who you might want to be interested in connecting with. Uh, we also have and a you question about, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead, Jordan. Oh, sorry, Kim, and you can contact them uh, using these two options on the top right, usually their Twitter handle and their email address. Oh, perfect. Uh, we have a question from Gretchen about uh, lesson order and uh, prioritized, uh, oh, prioritizing like eighth grade audience. So maybe we can talk first about lesson order, and then we can touch on um, talking about difficulty level and grade bands. Absolutely, and this is a great transition into the next part of the presentation, which is getting set, set up on Chuckology. Um, so as you saw, Chuckology has 14 core news literacy lessons, uh, and the customizability is essentially whatever you determine it to be. So if you would like to create your own customized news literacy course in exactly the order that you'd like it, you're welcome to do that. Uh, and as you'll see, as we go through the course setup process, uh, you'll also have options to select preset courses. And there are preset courses that are preset to be appropriate for certain uh, grade levels and subject areas. So we do have guidance on the platform for what lessons might be appropriate and in what order uh, for students. We also have comprehensive lesson guides uh, that will tell you uh, really detailed information about each of these 14 lessons and give you everything you'll need to know to determine whether or not to put it in your class's course. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into creating a Checkology account, setting up a class, and determining what course students will be working with. So to create your Checkology account, head to checkology.org, and you'll click the Register Now button on the top right. Here you'll select that you're an educator and click Register Now. And then there are only three steps to creating your account. You'll find your school in this list. Every school in the United States should be on Checkology. You just need to search for its zip code. And then once you found your school, you will connect your email address or your Google account uh, to your Checkology account, and then you'll be ready to go. So I'm gonna log into my teacher account to show you what that looks like. Getting set up should take no more than two or three minutes. So once I've created my Checkology account and I'm logged in, I'm brought straight to a dashboard. And as you can see, I have some classes already populating my dashboard. I'm one of those odd teachers who has both ELA and social studies classes, but this is a demo account. Um, but when you log into your account for the first time, what you'll see is this prompt to add a class. You don't have to go ahead and add a class. You can explore your uh, profile first and check out what Checkology has to offer. Uh, but for these purposes, let's go ahead and create a class. So this is just a few step process. I'm gonna enter a class title. Let's do a totally different subject. Let's do math two, so I can get three different subjects on my dashboard. I'll select my student type and grade level. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let's do that and we'll do other. If I need to learn more about what the platform is asking me to do, I can hover over any gray question mark that I see. And the only main setting that I need to determine right now is whether or not the course lock is on or off. The course lock, um, if it's on, it means that students are required to complete the news literacy course that you assign them, including uh, most of those 14 lessons like understanding bias in the particular order in which you've assigned it. But if the course lock is off, that means that students will have access to their entire news literacy course all at once. So for flexibility today, I'm going to leave the course lock off. I recommend that you explore the advanced settings. On the bottom right hand side, when you click open advanced settings, uh, you'll see uh, six different settings that are pretty important to your day to day use of Checkology. You'll see that the pre post assessment is default on. The pre-post assessment is a 20 question survey that students answer before they start their news literacy course. And this allows you and it allows us on an aggregate level to collect information about student learning gains over time. Um, so whenever students complete the pre-assessment, all of their responses go to your teacher dashboard and you're able to view student progress. And then as students go through their course, 
at the end of a lot of assignments, they'll have a post-assessment question that is aligned to that news literacy assignment. So if a student completes a pre-assessment and then the matching post-assessment question, you'll have their match data available to you in the pre-post-assessment tab on the top. So I highly recommend that you keep that pre-post-assessment on if you're able to. Uh, right now we have a student contest on Trackology. Contests are global competitions that usually ask students to do something creative. So right now the student contest asks students to create a poster or an, an infographic explaining the concept of patternicity uh, and how it relates to conspiratorial thinking, which is our newest lesson on Trackology. You can also turn the leaderboard on for your students, turn the discussion area on and determine whether or not there are posts there from NLP or you just want to populate it with your own posts. And like Kim said, uh, you have the ability here to discuss, or sorry, to, uh, to add co-teachers. So any other teacher in your building uh, who has a Trackology account will appear here in this list. Uh, and when you check their name, that means that they have access to student work and the ability to manage students in this class. So this is really handy if you're co-teaching a class or if you're a library media specialist uh, and you'd like to do the management of the class, but not necessarily evaluate, or you, you'd like your co-teacher to do something and you don't, um, here, you just instruct your co-teacher to create a Checkology account, and then you head to the advanced settings and you enable them as the co-teacher for this class. So I'm going to click create class now that I've gone through all of those advanced settings. And now that I've created the class, I'll show you what this math class looks like on my dashboard. I can go back and edit those class settings if I'd like to. Um, I can manage my students and I can assign a course. So first, let's check out the student management area. By far the most popular and the easiest way to add students is to have them self-register, uh, but if that's not possible, you can also add them manually. To have students self-register, you just copy this URL, which is a unique class join code to your clipboard, and then you paste it to students in a message. So when students click on that URL, they're again asked to connect their Google account, their Clever account, which is new, uh, or just creating an account um, without either of those services. And when they select the option, you'll see that the section code or the class code populates for them. So they don't need to do anything except for follow that link. And then once they create their account, they'll be added to your class roster and they'll be ready to go with Checkology. But once my students start logging into their Checkology accounts, they won't have anything to work with yet. They'll see a little message that says, ready, set, wait, your teacher is still building a course. And this is because you haven't assigned them a Checkology news literacy course yet. So let's head into the course assignment area and see what that looks like. So sometimes we don't necessarily have the time to create a fully custom course for students. And for that reason, we offer a default course called Checkology 101. Checkology 101 has seven lessons and four different supplementary activities that cover what we consider the core concept, concepts and skills of news literacy. I can check out more information about that course by clicking preview course. Here I'll see the description, the highlights and the learning objectives and a list of all of the content that's available in this course. And we'll go over these different content types here in a moment. If I'm crunched for time, what I'll probably do is just click assign to class. I'll give this course a name so it can match up with the class that I'm teaching. And I can see now that it is assigned. So when I go back to my dashboard, I'm gonna head to math two, and I can see that I have a full class tile now because that Checkology 101 course was assigned to students. But let's say I want to do a deeper dive, like Gretchen, I want to know um, what the appropriate pieces of content are for eighth graders, how long content takes to complete, et cetera. Then I can edit the course. So let's head into the course customization area. Here, you'll see everything that is already in the course. Is understanding bias there? It is, it's here towards the bottom because that is a slightly more difficult lesson. So to determine that at a glance, what you can do is hover over the difficulty level that's under each assignment on Checkology. Here you'll see that understanding bias is recommended for high school and higher education. I can bring that further up in the course if I'd like to. I can remove something from the course if I'd like to, and I can add more. Um, so at this point, let's talk a little bit about what types of content are available on Checkology. We talked about the 14 core lessons, and those you'll see on the platform are always going to be um, in pink under this Learn tab. So in addition to Understanding Bias, which is already here in the course, we've got Citizen Watchdogs, a lesson on newsworthiness, a Spanish language version of Practicing Quality Journalism or the Standards of Quality Journalism, and way more. When I close that drawer, I'll see 
a set of assignments called Practice and Extend. And these are extension activities that allow students to take the skills that they've learned in the core lessons and either practice them further or extend them a little bit to dive deep into a particular skill. Um, so for example, with the InfoZones lesson, where students learn about the difference between news and opinion among six total InfoZones, let's say they want a little bit more practice or you notice that they need more practice. What you can do is drag over an InfoZones exercise under the InfoZones lesson or anywhere, anywhere else in your course to give them that practice. And in the InfoZones lesson, they'll engage with pieces of information all related to COVID-19 and they will be asked to zone them or place them in their proper info zone based on what they see. And like everything else on Checkology, you'll see up-to-date examples from social media and news organizations that are appropriate for students and nonpartisan in all of these exercises. In addition to these practice and extend activities, we have fact-checking missions. In a fact-checking mission, students look at a piece of uh, information, usually from social media again, and they use digital verification skills like reverse image search, uh, like uh, using control F to find information on a page and more uh, to get to the bottom of that piece of information and determine whether or not it's true or whether there's enough evidence to support a claim that it's making. Um, so these work really well as supplementary activities or uh, often after the lesson misinformation. So let's say in this course, I would like to add a fact checking mission under misinformation, then I'll just drag it over. Um, I can also opt to just click the preview button here in the builder if I'd like to preview it before I drag it over. So as you can see, the course builder on Checkology is really flexible. I don't have to use it if I don't want to. I can assign a default course and be good to go. Or I can come into the course builder and at any time during my usage of Checkology with students, I can edit the course. Even if students have already started to use it, I can remove assignments and add them uh, and it won't affect student progress on the platform. So I'm gonna head back to the dashboard and show you another few ways that you can learn about content on Checkology. So where we were was the course builder. That's how you create a course on Checkology. But if you just want to preview content, you can click into the content tab and you'll see those same three drawers. Learn with all 14 lessons, practice and extend with the dozens of practice and extension activities related to the lessons and fact check where you can assign students fact checking missions. If you'd like to get into those comprehensive lesson guides, there are a few places you can do that. Uh, the easiest one I think is here in the help button. When you click help, you'll be able to watch a tutorial on that class setup process we just went through. You'll be able to take a tour of your Checkology account. You can head to the help center where you can contact us to get help and you can open these comprehensive lesson guides. So let's find the understanding bias lesson guide. Here under how to know what to believe, click understanding bias. And here you'll have the option to preview the lesson, check out a brief lesson overview where you can get information about the difficulty level, the estimated student time on platform, the number and types of assessments, standards alignments, and more. And you can check out the full lesson guide. And the full lesson guide will help you prepare uh, in advance for using the lesson in class. It's also a great uh, option to keep open while you're evaluating student work on the lesson. Because in the full lesson guide, you'll see uh, the text of exactly what the subject matter expert is saying. You'll see the assessments and their answers, and you'll see the word wall definitions on the bottom of each lesson element where there is a word wall definition. So I highly recommend checking out these comprehensive lesson guides to help you in getting your Checkology account set up and getting your course built for students. So that was a really quick and dirty introduction to creating your class uh, and inviting students and setting up their course on Checkology. I'd love to know what questions you have about the course setup process or about the assignments that are available on Checkology. All right, we have one from Jennifer. Is most of the material geared for secondary? Uh, so we consider the sweet spot that for whom we develop uh, eighth graders, but we notice that we do have a lot of high school students on the platform. There are a few lessons like understanding bias and conspiratorial thinking that are certainly geared for secondary students. And we also have lessons like info zones that are very appropriate for sixth and seventh graders. So I recommend using those uh, lesson difficulty ranking bars to determine whether or not a lesson will be appropriate for students in your grade band. We also have a question about the registration process. Is it better to connect via Clever or Google? I would say it's about equal. Um, if you choose to connect via Clever, 
then you will either need to add Checkology to your Clever library or talk to your district about getting uh, Checkology added as a district single sign-on option. But if you choose to log in with your Google account, then all you'll need to do is uh, enter your password for your Google account. So Google might be a little bit easier, but I would say neither is necessarily better. So one question that um, I have that I hear a lot is, can students um, jump into a lesson and then pause and come back to it later? Yes, um, whenever students uh, complete an assessment on a Checkology lesson or watch a video, their progress is saved at that point. Uh, so if they need to exit out of their browser or if they click the exit button on the bottom left-hand side of a lesson, then they all of the work that they've done so far will save. Uh, but you as the educator won't have access to evaluate that work until they've gotten to the end of the, of the assignment and click the submit button. Gotcha. Are there any other questions that you all have? Put them into the chat or the Q&A. We're happy to answer. All right, we've got Checkology is under the umbrella of News Literacy Project. That is correct. Uh, does News Literacy have anything for elementary since Checkology is focused on junior high and up? Uh, so we just debuted one exciting new resource for upper, upper elementary students, grades four through six. And to access that, I'll head back to Newslet Nation, which is at newslet.org and then click for educators. And then when I navigate to educator tools, I can check out the resource library. Here you'll see grades four through six as an option. And our newest resource for students in that grade band is the critical observation challenge was also really arrested. Uh, so this is, a, this is a Google slide doc, Google slide deck, excuse me. Um, in that you can use live in class, it's classroom ready, um, and it answers the essential questions that are uh, posed here. So this is something that you'll just need a few minutes to preview to see whether it's appropriate for where your students are um, in their learning for the year, and then you can share your screen and start using it in class with students in this grade band. We also have a question about uh, Checkology being used with universities and colleges. Can universities and colleges participate with Checkology? Absolutely. And we have record number of universities and colleges on the platform this year. Um, in fact, I think one of our um, one of our educators who's using Checkology the most often is a TA for a college course on uh, civics and contemporary events. And we also have um, many community colleges and universities with whom we're in conversations right now about using Checkology. I think there are quite a few lessons on the platform that are great for that grade level. and. You know, even though I've been with the News Literacy Project for three years now, I feel like I learn something whenever I watch a Checkology lesson on my own, and I'm in my 30s. So I think there, there are plenty of connections for older students here. Absolutely. I feel the same way. Uh, Gretchen <laughs> commented that those are great class openers uh, for, the com for conversation starters. So I was thinking maybe we would want to also highlight some of those great bell ringers that um, the SIFT often has with classroom ready resources. Absolutely. So uh, in the SIFT, which I'll navigate to here, one moment, lots of clicks here. The SIFT is our educator newsletter. Uh, it comes out on a weekly basis on Mondays so that you have the full week to use its resources in class. And it has uh, weekly examples of viral rumors, uh, tips for de debunking them with students, and other classroom ready activities that relate to journalism in the field of news literacy in general. So when you access the SIFT, you can either subscribe to get it in your mailbox, which I highly recommend that you do, or you can check out the archives. So let's check out the archive from, to, um, from the other day. Here you'll see the lead article, which talks about an important topic in news literacy from the week. And then you'll see examples that you can use in class. For example, here's a viral rumor rundown. What you can do with the viral rumor rundown is screen share this example or send it to students and ask students uh, to describe why this is misinformation and why it's misleading. Uh, soon these examples of misinformation will be provided to you in slide deck form so that you can use them uh, in a screen share scenario. Also in the SIFT you will find a resource called News Goggles. And News Goggles is written by two uh, professional former journalists who are on NLP staff who will dig into something that is a frequently asked question for journalists. So in the example of news goggles from this week, they took a look at recent stories about the weather issue and the power issue in Texas. 
So when you open a news goggles resource, you'll see an introduction to what the topic is for that week, quotes and news reports, some tips for using it in class, and a little bit of context. So Susanna and Hannah take you through these different concepts in news literacy with this classroom ready slide deck. And that's just one example of something that you'll find in the SIFT. It's an, ex an extremely rich resource. Absolutely, I love those viral rumor rundowns as like a quick way to um, get students critically thinking about uh, what, what's being shared on social media. It's so relevant to things that they're encountering in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, one question I, I wanted to make sure that we got to, and you might've done this while I was in the chat, um, have we talked about co-teachers in Checkology and how to assign co-teachers and what that looks like when you are a co-teacher? We did, but I think it's worth revisiting briefly. Uh, so okay. let's say you've already created your classes on your dashboard, or if you're a media specialist and you've created classes for everybody in the building, uh, you can add a new co-teacher at any point by clicking the edit button next to class settings, clicking open advanced settings, and then heading down to the co-teachers area. And everybody who's a teacher in your building will appear in that list. And I think now's a great opportunity to dive into the journalist directory a little bit. Um, so that in addition to the courses that students are using, um, there are a few other features on the platform that are really exciting uh, and provide opportunities for inquiry-based learning for you and your students. So in the journalist directory, you'll find um, a list of over 120 vetted professional journalists who are excited to have conversations with you and your students on a variety of topics in news literacy. Uh, so you can search by their zip code if you're interested in having a conversation with someone who's close to you or who works or who grew up in your area and knows about local issues. And you can also filter by area of expertise. Um, so during the past school year, we've seen interest in local politics, of course, and national politics. Fact checking is always extremely popular, misinformation, the standards of quality journalism. Uh, if you'd like someone who speaks a particular language, you can uh, check those boxes and then click the go, the go button. And here you'll see that we have 116 journalists who are qualified to speak on those areas of expertise. So when I click into someone's profile, let's choose Michelle, I can see an outline of their work experience and a link to their bio their areas of expertise and links to their previous work. And then if I decide that I'd like to invite them to come speak to my class about one of these topics, I can click invite Michelle. And this form will send an email to Michelle. Uh, so when Michelle receives this email, they will get back to you via email and y'all will coordinate the visit on your own um, just in the email format. So usually these visits have been happening over Zoom uh, for the past year or so. If you need any assistance getting set up with a video conferencing uh, software option, we'd be happy to help you with that. Um, so it might be, seem a little bit daunting to reach out to a journalist out of the blue and uh, ask to have a conversation with them. But just to reiterate, these folks are really excited to talk to you and your students, and we do offer supports for you in using the journalist directory. If I head to the resources tab, among many other things, I will find a classroom connection planning document. I will find it here under teacher supports. And this is a Google Doc that creates a copy. Oh. Got to sign in first. And then once I have that open, uh, sorry about that. Once I have that classroom connection doc planning document open, um, the journalist and I can use it to decide on the essential question for the lesson uh, on some things that we want to make sure to cover uh, and on some important things to keep in mind while we have the classroom connection. So you can really make it your own. Uh, and once the classroom connection is over, you can head back to the journalist tab and there will be a little pink banner for you there on the page to give us a review of how things went with the journalist so we can make sure that everybody's having a positive experience with the journalist directory on Checkology. Important question about the journalist directory. Is this, yeah. is this function of Checkology free? Absolutely. Um, everything we offer um, for educators is free. So you never have to worry that we'll be asking you for your payment details or that we'll ask you to pay retroactively. It is all free. Are there any other questions that we can answer for you today or clarify anything? If you'd like to hear more information on a, a feature or a setting in Checkology, we are happy to make sure that you all feel confident and ready to use Checkology and bring news literacy to your classrooms. And while you're thinking of questions, I do want to head to our help center, which is where Kim does a lot of her work. 
Uh, the Help Center is open from nine to five. Well, it's open 24 seven, but Kim is on there from nine to five Eastern. Uh, and Kim is available via chat, phone call, uh, or email to answer your questions about Checkology. To get in touch with her, you can click the help button here. And I can search for the term or the thing that I need help with, or I can just type contact. And then I can click the contact us button. Um, so when she is online, you'll have an option to chat with her directly or give her a call. You can also click the submit a request button, which will send her an email. Uh, and more importantly here, we've got tons of ready-made videos and guides um, that should be able to answer a lot of the questions that you have or uh, enable you to provide information for your colleagues about Checkology. You can find a, guard, a guide to getting started on Checkology, which covers a lot of what we covered today. And you can see very specific articles about particular aspects of Checkology. So course assignment is something about which we see a lot of questions. So you can elect to watch the quick guide to assigning a course or you can get really nitty gritty and learn, for example, about what the default course is. You can check out that course description that we saw on the platform in the course sequence, and you can learn how to preview it and then assign it. Um, so I recommend heading to the Help Center if you'd like any refresher on what we talked about today or to get in touch with Kim. If you have any questions and you're on the Help Center and you, you don't see an article for something you're interested in, feel free to send me a request. Um, I got a request in my inbox the other day for a Help Center article about contests, which is something we offer on Checkology occasionally. And so I, I went ahead and added an article on contests to help uh, clarify that for, for users. So we're always happy to hear from you and hear about your feedback for Checkology or hear your ideas for enhancing the Help Center. Um, and contests are ongoing right now. Jordan, do you want to talk a little bit about our contest we got going on? Yeah, we uh, briefly talked about it earlier. I think we've received four submissions, but uh, related to our new lesson on conspiratorial thinking, which I think it would be great to preview for a moment. Uh, there is a contest asking students to uh, design our poster and an infographic um, related to patternicity, which is one of the concepts from the conspiratorial thinking lesson. It's essentially uh, our tendency to see patterns where they don't exist in order to uh, make connections that we're attempting to make like looking at a cloud and seeing a particular shape. Uh, so in the contest, students um, are to use their creativity to illustrate uh, something related to patternicity and make a connection to conspiratorial thinking. The conspiratorial thinking lesson just debuted in December um, and it contains many real world examples. In the summer of 2020. Many of them related to the, the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, and it also contains examples from re real conspiracies that have happened in US history. Um, so this focuses a lot on the uh, cognitive aspects behind conspiratorial thinking and how we can avoid the pitfalls. All right, we've got, I think, one more minute. And with that one minute, I would love to talk about the Czech Center for a moment. Here in the Czech Center, which is available for teachers and students. There are two options. Uh, this is a digital verification area where students can <clears throat> learn and practice skills related to checking information online and determining whether or not it's accurate or whether there is evidence present for a claim. So in the Check Center, you'll see under the toolbox that there are short tips or things that make navigating online spaces easier, like using Control T to open a new tab or highlighting and copying a URL to make navigating spaces faster. And under skills, you'll find uh, tutorials from an education team that last between two and five minutes, talking about each of these different skills that you can use to uh, investigate a piece of information and then how to actually do that. Uh, so for example, the reverse image search video uh, takes students through what a reverse image search is and why you might use it. And then there are some resources here in the toolbox next to it to actually do a reverse image search. And the Check Center is meant to be used in conjunction with those fact-checking missions that we went over uh, that can be assigned as part of your student's course. Uh, this is also a great standalone tool for you to use with uh, activities that you create or with bell ringers like the ones that you find from the SIFT. In addition to this toolbox area in the Check Center, you have a quick check, which is a habit of mind builder. And in the quick check, you take your own piece of information that you found online and you go through a series of questions that you answer about it. And at the end of the series of questions, uh, the widget helps you determine whether or not that piece of information is likely true, likely false, or we just don't have enough information to know. 
Um, so this could be great for extra credit assignment um, or to, for you to use as an educator uh, to investigate a piece of information that you find and to help develop those habits of mind. So I thank you so much feature. for- I love yeah, that feature because it's a great way to get students thinking about research projects um, from start to finish, like what, what information they're choosing ahead of time and what questions they should be asking themselves as they're going through that. And the Check Center looks exactly the same on both a teacher account and a student account. So it's really great to kind of see what your students are going to see and how you can engage with that and prepare them to use the Check Center resources. Yeah, thank you for making those connections. This is a great tool for research um, and it is nice that it is the same interface for students and for teachers. So this brings us to the end of our 45 minutes. Um, thank you so much for your engagement today and for your questions. I know that uh, Shailen is excited to work with you to help bring Checkology uh, to your schools and to your districts. And Kim is excited to uh, interact with you in the Help Center and figure out how we can um, optimize Checkology for your usage. So if you have any further questions, please do reach out to us in the Help Center um, and keep on coming to office hours. Some months we do an overview of what Checkology is and other months we uh, answer a specific question or we dive into a particular topic. So in January, for example, uh, we talked to library media specialists about how they optimize Checkology for their usage. So thanks again for your time today and we look forward to seeing you on the platform.